Good evening, everybody. And especially good evening to Joe Sardina and Dick Berg and Peter Nelson from Australia. And of course, Stevie. Um, it's been three weeks since the last one of these videos, mostly because there's been some family activities and things uh, going on out on the West Coast. But I'm back and we're here tonight to talk about uh, ACP Scheduler's uh, Schedule Browser. But before we do that, oh, I also have to mention um, welcome and thank you for subscribing, Iris Hernandez, uh, Michael and Karen Vandervorst, and Stu Goosen. Thank you very much. Um, I always try to uh, remind people to... Oh, hello, Iris. There you are. Excellent. <laughs> All righty. Uh, this is a interactive thing. Sometimes it's kind of hard to <clears throat> kind of get the guts up to ask a question, but I really work very well if I have to answer questions. It's much better than me trying to go off a script. So with that said, I'm going to close my little control panel here. And first thing on my list of things to do is to review the normal way of getting work into the uh, into ACP Scheduler, and that is with the forms that come on, and I always say, use the web stuff. This is what I put all my work into. So um, we went over these forms last time, so I'm not going to spend hardly any time on this. But just as a reminder, this is how to get work in. If you need to figure out how this works, there's two ways to do that. You can push the magic help button here, and there's some info there for you. Or you can go to last the last video from three weeks ago and see how all this stuff works. But there's two forms, one for astro imaging, where you put in your long runs of exposures on a single object, uh, and you put them in by color, and it breaks them up into pieces, and then you, you know, goes and acquires your images. For science work, there's a series uh, form, and it's the same kind of thing. Uh, you just fill out the form, push the button, and the requests go in. Well, what happens when they go into the scheduler? Uh, also, uh, well, in an, in an earlier video, I explained how the scheduler works and how the the uh, process of choosing what to do when and all of that works. But I'm going to go over the concept of how things are blocked or broken up by the scheduler so that it knows what to do and it understands what you want from it. So with that, I'm... I need to mention one thing, and this may, you know, it may also help clarify things. The scheduler figures out what to do and when, and then once it does that, it will send a job to ACP, and then it goes to sleep. The scheduler just sits there. Now ACP itself, as an observing engine, will do what the scheduler tells it to do however many images and what at what location in the sky, binning and filter, all of that. It'll grind it out when it's all finished. It tells the scheduler, okay, I've done that. Now the ACP goes to sleep. The scheduler wakes up. It decides what it's going to do next. Tells ACP, goes to sleep. ACP wakes up. It starts to work. So that's the way they cooperate. And uh, it may not be obvious at first, but actually, if you think about it, it's a pretty simple and easy way to divide the system up into modules. Um, that also may explain why some of you might be confused of the difference between the scheduler engine log and the ACP logs. I'll ask for an ACP log when something goes wrong during the actual observation process. We'll get into that, and I'll show you how to find those both of these logs real easily in just a sec. But the the idea is when the scheduler sends the work to ACP and it's running, it's generating an observing log just like it would if it was observing from an ACP live observing plan. They go in just a little bit different place, and there's a whole other video on how to find your files. That's something else. But anyway, it generates a log. Those logs are really important, especially for troubleshooting. Each time the scheduler sends work to ACP and it accomplishes that work, it produces a log. Meanwhile, all through the night as the scheduler is going to sleep, waking up, making decisions, going to sleep, etc., etc., it's making a log. So if something goes wrong with what's being done when, 
then we go to the scheduler engine log and we see what might or might not have gone wrong there. So that's kind of how things work. I'll show you in a minute how to get to those logs and how to visualize what's going on. The next thing is, and I'm going to use a visual aid for this. We're going to go to the schedule browser and I have some work in here. Um, I'll explain why it's showing running here in just a sec. It's kind of a fine point, but let me get this off of here and we're just going to sit and work with this for a while. As I explain, and I'm only going to spend a little bit of time on this, if you want more clarification, again, you can go back to one of the earlier videos, but ACP or our scheduler um, breaks things up into projects. Whoops, I got to get over here on the right screen. Projects. Let me get a, a better one here. Something simple like that. Foo, that's a simple one I know. Mm -hmm. All right. Projects can have, they're just a container. They're just a place to put stuff, work items. The plan, which is this thing here, and here's a project with uh, a couple of plans. The plan is the minimum schedulable unit. If everything in the plan can't be done by constraints, the scheduler won't start it. There may be things in there that it does in pieces, and I'll show you that, and that's a big part of what we're going to talk about tonight. But the plan is the minimum schedulable unit. The observation, come on, man, go over here. This is, that's an individual ACP job. So the plan may have one or more ACP jobs. This is, a, here's the, the, the plan. And in here, here's the ACP job. I'm going to show you a plan with a lot of ACP jobs in a minute. Each one of those can be a different target. And then within that, there can be one or more sets of images taken for that target within that plan. Here's another plan with just a simple single observation. So each one of these plans will result in a single ACP job. Now, and the image set is this thing here, how many images, and this can be more than one filter. You can get really complicated with this. Again, there's another video on all this, but here's where I want to go to as a demonstration of what you can do here. And let's go back up here. The, begin the starting point for all of this, um, ah, hey, it's Quinn. Hi, Quinn. How are you doing? I see him there. That's lips and beaks. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. It's probably completely outside your, uh, uh, you know, knowledge level or area, but this is what this is what I do for a living. All right. What I'm going to do is look at this project in the in the scheduler in the schedule browser the entry point when you first open it up is this project information page so here are all the projects listed and as you can see what you what you see here is how many hours of imaging each one represents how much of it's been completed how much of it's waiting for processing either because uh, it's not ready yet or the constraints aren't yet met or whatever Deferred means that it's been looked at and shown to uh, have to be done a little bit later. Failure is something that has gone wrong. And disabled is if you disable the, uh, uh, the, the plan here, which I can do just disable. So foobar, if I go back now and I reload this, I didn't, I should have put one in there that's disabled. Where's foobar? Yeah, there's disabled now. It's whole thing is disabled. But let's go back to this NEO survey and um, uh, take a closer look at that. All right, what I've done is I've clicked in in the list here. Let me do this one more time just so you're not lost. Um, I've clicked. Hold on. Just give me two seconds here. All right, I've clicked 
Yeah, this thing, I'm a little short on space here, so it's kind of squoze up this. But anyway, I've clicked in. Here are all the projects, as I've said before. I'm going to look at this particular project here and see that it consists of a bunch of plants. What this is, is an asteroid survey where for multiple targets, it's going to go and go to that place in the sky and take images spaced apart in time. So it's like a time series, but it's got gaps between the individual images. Now let's drill down and look at one of these uh, plans. It shows that there are four different ACP jobs. The first one got vetoed. We'll see how to find out what that is. But the point is, it's not going to run yet. Let's go back and look at some of the other ones. Here's one that's actually running. All right. So, so far, this thing, the plan is running because it has done some of the observations. It sent two of these pictures to ACP to take of that area of the sky. And there's, let's take a closer look at this one. This is plan... I think I might be confusing you a little bit. Asteroid 006. All right, let's look at it over here like this. Same idea. See, these two are completed here, right? So let's look at the first one. It has an ACP job to go to this location in the sky, and then it's going to take a 180-second image at that place. The next one, the next ACP job, comes 2,400 seconds later. So that's 40 minutes later, the scheduler is going to come back to that place and take another image. Now, keep in mind, when it started the plan, that is four images spaced 40 minutes apart, it clunk and put the whole thing in there. That's it. I know I'm going to take all four of those images, but there's going to be 40 minute spaces between them. So when I stopped the scheduler, it had already taken two, but it's still waiting to take two more. So that's why it shows here that um, uh, that the in the in the information page, it shows that these plans are running. They're not actually imaging right now, although they might be if one of the images is actually being taken. But the point is. Not all four of the visits to that area have been made. I hope I'm making that clear. Um, if somebody is confused or if you if you want me to go back over this again, I will. Uh, just say so. And uh, Or if somebody says, yeah, you're doing great, that'll help me out also. So uh, the idea here is that we're looking at what is put in by those forms. In this case, I put this in... Um, manually by creating a new plan and then creating the four observations and blah, blah, blah. And it took me some time. It was hard. You can also create these sorts of things with RTML. Um, I don't have an asteroid survey form in ACP because not that many people do it anymore. More people do just time series. The point I'm trying to make here is that you can look through what's in the scheduler, both in this grid or by drilling down to the individual pieces of every request in there. So let's take, let's go back to the, um, which one did I just do? Let's look at the, the same thing here. So I, I cheated. I used the, uh, the scheduler test project generator to, to make this asteroid thing. So let's go back here. Now, Remember what I said about the scheduler engine log versus the individual. Uh, ah, to create these 13 asteroid plans, did you duplicate one plan 12 or more times? If not, could you? You could, but they'd all be for the same place in the sky. The idea being each one of these is for a different place in the sky. So you could duplicate it and then go back in and just fill in. Let's go to that. Um, this over here, I'm almost. I'm looking at my um, my audio or video board over here, and that's not what that's not the live desktop. <laughs> so let's take a look at the NEO survey here. All right, 
there they are. So here's the first ACP plan. One, two, I mean, um, job one, two, three, four. Those are the four images for this place in the sky right here. Okay. Hello, Chris Stockdale. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so as you can look here, as I click from one to the next, it's the same coordinates in each one. But when I go to the next one, if I click here, it's a totally different place in the sky. So what you could do is you could come up and create one of these, duplicate it. Now it would see asteroid 002-1 or something, and then come down here and put new coordinates in here and change the name maybe. And now you'd have another one. So yes, you could do that and it would be a fairly efficient, excuse me, my nose is itching like nuts. It would be a fairly efficient way to do it. I hope I made that clear. If I didn't, um, ask me again. I'll try to do it again. I don't want to do this live because sure as heck I'll goof something up and then, you know, I'll, I'll end up being all embarrassed and everything. But actually, what the heck? Let's, uh, let's add one more frame on here, right? So I'm going to take this plan, Asteroid 001, which at the moment is for this location in the sky, and it's been vetoed. I should point out, it's below the horizon right now. And if you go uh, deeper, it will say that it's pending. What am I doing here? It should say when it's going to be ready again. Let's see. Ah, there it is. For the plan, it can't start the plan yet because it's vetoed the first one for the horizon. If you go back up here to the plan, it says it'll be ready at 02. 08 UTC. Well, that is, was in the future when I was running this earlier. So I hope that makes sense also. I wanted to cover that, so now I am. Um, to tell why when it's asleep like this, it means it's vetoed. It's out of constraints. So you can go over here and see when it might run later. That's a valuable thing also. I hope you're getting the idea that there's a lot here that you can use to figure out what's going on. And I'm going to switch over here to the old desktop schedule browser, which is the first thing that I ship with ACP. This has some interesting, unique features like being able to import ACP plans, but that's about it. Uh, everything else that you've seen in the, in the, desk, in the uh, web schedule browser is here, except there's less here. This is the old original way, and it's used as a uh, kind of a uh, test tool and utility tool and that sort of thing. But I just want to encourage everybody not to use this, but to use the web schedule browser because it's much more functional with the exception of being able to uh, import ACP plans. Okay, Dick, I see you've got it. That's good. So how do we get logs? Let's go back here. Everybody says, well, I don't know how to get the uh, the ACP log. Where is it? Is it in, you know, especially if you're logged in remotely from the web, it's in the, the web browser, I mean, sorry, the web server's secret location. There's another video that covers that. But web docs, blah, blah, user, blah, blah, logs, blah, blah. Where the hell is it? I don't know. So we made it really easy. Here is a, a, a project project foo that has a completed plan whoops come on click over here then it has a completed plan boom there it is okay it has two observations in that plan and look here are the acp logs for each one again i'm saying that the the plan generates chunks of work for acp in the case of foo it generated two chunks of work observations bar and bar one hello jerome thank you for joining us uh so it uh it generates two acp jobs bar and bar one they have been finished thumbs up successful so you just go the project the plan the observations under that plan and boom there's the acp log there's one and Two. And if you'll see, you can't see it here, but they're going into a separate tab. 
because of how I've got the uh, video board set up here to just show the video itself and not all the junk at the top of the browser. But anyway, if you want that thing, you can also, um, once you get it into another thing here, you can actually uh, save it somehow where print. Yeah, I guess not. Wait a minute. There is a way. Yeah, save as. There we go. And there it is. You, ACP run log. It's an HTML thing because it's nice to view, but at least you can see it. So that's how you see what's going on and you can uh, tell what's happening or if, if there's a failure, you can look at that. All right. So I was talking about each of the jobs that ACP runs. Now, how do you get to the scheduler engine log? And this was the log that, that ran when I did this afternoon. I, I put this NEO survey project in. It's just a test project. So and then I ran it. It took a couple of hours and it only got partway through, as you could see. But hit the scheduler engine log and there it is. You don't have to go hunting for it. And it's interesting to take a look at this. Here are the ones that were that were vetoed by the horizon. I'm not going to spend much time on this, but just to point out that it's already looking at uh, that trying to run things and keep them straight. The logs automatically saved. Yes, they are on the disk, and there's a uh, Peter Nelson. The di it uh, the locations of the logs are um, described in another video, but they're there. If you if you log in through the web, they're accessible one way, and if you log in, if you're in the observatory, they're accessible a different way. But yes, they're there. So um, you can see the scheduler's working now. It has a bunch, several of these plans, each of which have four images with gaps in between them. So what it's trying to do is fit them in between each other so that it can jump from one to the next and not waste time because it's 40 minutes between those those images, right? So it's stuffing other work, but the other work also has the 40 minute gaps. So it's trying to fit those together and it's it's doing it. It's just at this point, it couldn't do these ones so, you know, it just keeps going and, and now you can see there's fewer of those uh, overlap things and now it's really working. So you can kind of get an idea of it working the asteroid search thing here. And uh, I'm not going to belabor this thing because it's boring. So where are we on time? 20 minutes. I'm doing all right. Uh... What else can you do with the schedule browser? Well, one of the things is that's handy to be able to do is to, let's say you have a big project uh, like this Boyce Nebula. That's a big one I created. That's got lots of plans. That's an astro imaging one that, that came from the astro imaging form. So let's say I don't even want to run that. I can select it here and say pause. Okay. See the, see what happened here? Okay, this is not going to run now, ever. Just plain won't run. The whole project can be turned off or on. That's one of the nice things that you can do with projects if you organize your stuff that way. Okay. In addition, um, if you have a, uh, let's say like this, a plan that's completed, and you want to rerun it, let's just say you do. So you come up here to the plan, and you say resubmit. Boom. And now, it, see the face has changed? So now it's ready to run again. It will, the next time it becomes eligible, it will be in play with all of the other plans, and it will get run eventually. If you look at these other buttons here, it's worth looking at disable all right now that individual plan has been disabled even though the project is still allowed so for example um, resubmit will undo that let's go back to one of these busy things the voice nebula let's say you don't want to do any greens but you want to do all the others okay 
will resume the plan, but we will disable all of the greens. All right, there you go. So I hope that makes sense. You see what happened there. And when it disabled it, it disabled everything. So now the greens are disabled, but all of these other ones would get run. All right. We'll go back and look at some of the other things you can do with the plan. Oh, if you change something in here, uh, let's say I want to um, change the priority to three on this. And I will talk about priority in another video. Let's save changes. Okay, there now. If I come back to this, priorities now three. The monitor interval I will talk about if we have time today, but it doesn't look like we're going to. The advanced features part of this is going to be probably in two weeks. Is this? I really want to make sure everybody super understands this and, uh, uh, you know, and not make it drag on. So if somebody wants to watch this video later, they can not have to sit for 45 minutes just to see or, you know, longer just to see the advanced concepts. I'd like to just dive right into them in the next one, which will be in two weeks. So um, I hope this has helped you to understand how the, uh, the web schedule browser works and why it's really important. You know, you should explore this thing. There's a lot there. Um, and again, I really uh, uh, encourage you also to um, use the web interface. I, I still talk to people who aren't. Everything's shut down right now. So uh, I'm just, I just have this on for the, for the website and that's it. Uh, but I really encourage you to use this, even if you're in the observatory, to do all your work through the web browser interface because that's where I do all my all my design. I think I showed some people uh, the other night that um, I have a CTC slash 2017 slash M4, I think. Watch what happens here. Boom. Okay. It now has figured out that this is a... Uh, uh, a comet that's hidden the right ascension and declination. So this form, and this is new in, in 8.2, the forms are more responsive in this way. Uh, we've there've been, that Schwassmann, Watsman, Wachman comet has been real popular and I've had to help some people out. So I've made it a little easier for folks uh, as a result of user input. Dickberg says how all of these can be run in the simulation mode. There are two simulation scenarios for scheduler. One is scheduler um, simulating all by itself. And I'll, it's, Iris, good question. I'll tell you in just a sec. The you can schedule, you can run the scheduler itself in simulation mode. And yes, everything works like this. You can test it all out. You can play with it. You can run complicated plans, see what it does. That's the whole point of the simulation is you can run that and it has basically its own built-in fake ACP that when it's told to do something, instead of taking 45 minutes to, to or you know, 30 minutes for an image, it just bumps the clock by 30 minutes. So it'll rip through all your work and stop itself at the end of the night. And then you can go back in and analyze the log and you can also use the run detail plotter to look where it's visited and, the, and see the timeline and all of that stuff. So it's a very valuable analysis tool. It's what I use to prevent myself from going nuts while I was um, designing it. If you need some more help on that, um, I can help on the Comp Center also. Iris, how do you get the coordinates for comets? All right. So um, in here, uh, there is, well, I'm, I'm rather than trying to read this, I'll just tell you. CT is a magic thing for Comet. And then you put in the name, the number, or the designation. MP for minor planet, or just a planet name. 
So for Comet, CT space, and then there's the, the, the name of the comet, the designation actually. Um, and then hit this button. And what happens is that's just checking to see it, it'll put a note down here that says it's found and the ephemeris will be calculated at image time. That's because it has the Minor Planet Center um, cometary database in accessible to ACP. Also the MPC or um, Minor Planet database. They're both installed and you have to update those every so often. Um, but there's little cl clickable tools that do that real easy. You download it and you click this thing and then boom, it builds a new one. So, uh, and then the, the elements are looked up and then there's a, uh, uh, a component that calculates the ephemeris at imaging time. And so then it slews a telescope to that location right at that time. And if you'll notice when I put that in, a new checkbox came up here for orbital tracking. If your telescope supports it, if your mount supports it, you can turn on this thing here and that will cause the mount to follow the body. So not only does it calculate the ephemeris, but it calculates the rate uh, uh, offset from sidereal for that um, solar system object and it'll follow that. So if you image it that way, you'll get streaked stars and the comet will stay still. You probably have trouble co uh, for fast moving objects. It won't plate solve right, but you just don't worry about it. You'll still get the images. So I hope that answers your question, Iris. That was a good one. Thank you. Um, if you want to look up something here, also uh, say in GC space, because it always starts and there's help for this that says you have to put the space in there. All right. Again, this help button is really important. So visible only means here's all of the stuff that starts with NGC that's visible. Ah, all right. Here's all the things that are up right now. I can click on one and there it is. And it put that the info up in here for you. My test schedules didn't calculate the coordinates. Ah, you probably didn't um, install the MPC or the Comet database. But if you have a problem with this, please post a note to the Comm Center, the, the DC3 Dreams Communications Center, which is, you probably have been there before this thing. Uh, since this is a scheduler related one, you would post it here and then ask the question and I will help you out. I will say this, the, uh, the nice responsive form that you see for when you put in the CT space and all of that, that's new in 8.2, but you can still do it in the uh, previous version of scheduler by just putting the CT and then the thing in there, but you just don't know for sure whether you got it right. So anyway, uh, this is great. I really appreciate your questions. This is, that's what really makes it go for me is getting questions from folks. All right. So what we've done is cover the schedule browser and why you should be using this for everything scheduler related, how to find the, uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, how to find the log files. That's important. Um, let's see, Jerome, you savage, uh, so run, reset the time. Uh, well, if you have the scheduler running in simulation mode, uh, you want to be sure you turn it back to night mode or day night if you're still testing, but testing, I forgot to, to tell you the other way of simulation. There's one. Okay. I'll answer your question in a minute. One way to simulate with the scheduler running itself is a simulation. The other one is to have the scheduler talking to the actual ACP and then having ACP running as a simulation by generating fake star fields. Now it's going to drive your dome and your camera and all that stuff around and actually observe, but you're going to get, you know, simulated star fields, which is fine, but it still gives you an idea then of how it would work. 
But if you're just using the scheduler in simulation mode, the let's see, let me um, bring this out and I'll show you what I'm what I'm trying to do here. How about we go to the desktop here? All right, where are you, scheduler? Probably behind my. Uh, there you are. All right, all right. I have this in day night because when I was doing the asteroid project for this evening's video, I was driving ACP itself with um, simulated camera, simulated telescope, simulated focuser, blah, blah, blah. But it was still generating work so that we would be able to see those log files, um, the ACP log files for each observation. But the day night and normal, these two buttons, there you have no control over the time. The time here is the time of the observatory period. So I don't know if that answers your question, Jerry, but um, that, uh, let's go back to this now. I can't see the chat with this. I will go back here. Um, so you have to, uh, if you, if you use a simulation, by the way, right click in that time thing and you'll see some cool uh, shortcuts like going to the next sunset time and some other stuff. Um, and if you hover your mouse over them, it'll give you a hint that there's some right click options on that. So uh, anyway, I think I understand your question. I'm not 100% sure, but as soon as you switch the scheduler to either day, night or normal, it locks itself to the system time and that's it. You have no control over the clock. Did, did that answer your question? Otherwise, you, maybe you can rephrase it and I'll try again. Um, all right. Yes, that's correct. You have to switch back and forth the simulation modes. If you want to simulate with the scheduler, you have to put it in that. Uh, let me restore this and bring it back again. In order for you to simulate, you have to switch it to this simulation mode here. I might add that if you install scheduler on a computer with no ACP and no license, it'll still install just fine but it will only simulate. So you can put scheduler on any machine you want, run it, and uh, it will do everything in, in simulation mode because it's independent of ACP at that point. It's not very useful. You can't actually do any observing with it that way, but at least you can um, observe its behavior. Now, here's the bad part of it. You have to use the... Uh, the awful um, desktop, let me go back over here. You have to use the desktop schedule browser with that. There's no web because the web server is inside ACP. And without ACP, you don't have the web, you don't have the web forms, you don't have all that functionality. So you, but what you can do is do things like generate test projects. And these things are fairly useful for just, for observing the, uh, I didn't mean to get into this, but that's okay. We'll, we'll do it. Um, you can generate test projects uh, and you can use that to observe the behavior of the scheduler. Um, and then uh, once you generate them, you can ha have different types of work and, and uh, put them in there and then fire it up at the beginning of the night, let it grind all night, and then come back and look later at how it did. Um, and actually that's f a topic for another a video sometime how to actually do the analysis if you're that interested because it's a kind of a multi-step thing but um, at least this gives you an idea you can run all of this this the desktop schedule browser and scheduler all by itself with no license no acp and uh, uh, just by installing it it will install without any for free in other words it's just it'll just go so let me let me look one more time at the chat scroller here. Yes. Ah, fixed time plans. Yes, Peter, that is I'm going to touch on it right now to help answer your. Uh, let me read your question again. Start a plan exactly on time. For instance, a previous plan may have been cloud affected. <sighs> Well, then I don't understand. If you have to start a plan at exactly 
let's say, 0300 UTC, and it's cloudy then, what do you do? I mean, it didn't start, right? Because the weather was no good. So there is a monitor mode in ACP, Arian Scheduler, and if you are okay with doing it the next night, that's a new 8.2 feature. If you turn on the monitor mode and the fixed time both, it will, even if it fails the night before, and I'm actually working on that logic right now, it's tricky. There's some, what happens if the weather is bad before the the time slot comes up? Well, then you leave it running. But if the weather goes bad after the beginning of the exact time time slot, then you have to fail it. But then you have to requeue it the next night, maybe, if it's just a weather one. If it failed for some other reason, you don't requeue it. And you have to turn on the um, requeue failed weather plan. So uh, and that logic isn't in there for fixed time observations. So I'm working on that right now. And with 8.2, you should be able to have it automatically requeue a plan that was failed the night before that's a fixed time plan. It'll retry it the next night by adding an exact day to that time. It'll be the same time, but another day ahead, 24 hours later. Um, so I hope that uh, makes sense. You can requeue it. Maybe I, I'm not 100%. I, I understood your question, and I'm not going to sit on this for too much longer, but I'm hoping maybe some of that answered part of your question. Again, if you need more clarification, you can post a note to the comm center and I'll answer it there. Um, I do plan on do on, on covering time series and, uh, a, you know, fixed time things in, uh, an upcoming video, probably the next one. There's those, um, best efforts and fixed time are what are going to be covered almost certainly the next, uh, the next, in two weeks in the next video. So I just should say one thing. I have it on my notes here. Be sure you tell everybody. You do not need a fixed time uh, uh, request for asteroids and comets because, as I showed a little bit earlier, it will calculate the ephemeris for those solar system objects whenever it decides to observe it, as long as it's within your constraints. It'll calculate the uh, coordinates for it at that point and put it right there. So I think we've reached cloud may have been 20 minutes in the previous plan, but it will extend the finish time of that project. The next one is due. If the well, you're going to have to ask this. If clouds, if if you get an unsafe weather condition in an a plan or an uh, that's running, and a plan gets killed because you hit a, an unsafe weather condition, it gets killed right there. Um, that's the end of that plan. So 20 minutes before the time of your fixed time thing, if that plan that it's stuck in there before your fixed time thing. If that plan gets killed for weather, but then the weather becomes safe again just before your fixed time plan, your fixed time plan will still run. It looks for all those fixed time plans at the beginning of the night and starts them right then. So when you look at the, at the web schedule browser, you'll see that all of those fixed time plans are marked started because those time slots are carved out. But if the weather unsafe occurs during that period, during the, you know, w once your fixed time plan starts, well, then there's nothing you can do about it, right? It gets killed. It's a failure. So I'll cover that more next time, but hopefully that will give you a hint uh, that'll help you understand. This has been really, really good, everybody. This is by far the best video we've had yet. Um, I'm so happy that we had some people show up. <laughs> really, although these things are have been getting lots and lots of views after the program, but it's so much nicer when I know there's at least three or four or five people watching and I get questions. Iris and Peter, thank you very much. I really appreciate your questions. I wish I could do a better job. I know it's kind of hard to type a question, you know, in the heat of the moment into a live chat. So, and those are fairly complicated <laughs> questions. So, um, this may be just a limitation of what we can do. And that the, the best thing to do on that is to just go on over to the, uh, oh, I had it here. Hold on. Um, the comm center for that. And, uh, 
and put your question in there and I'll do the best to answer that. We really, I spend a lot of time on that every day as you probably have figured out. Eric McLaughlin, thank you for joining. We really appreciate everybody there. Uh, but I want to say here, I, you know, you have to bear with me. I'm doing all my own video switching. I'm my own technical director. So in order to get this one up, uh, I need to find this here and then bring Firefox up, which I should have done first. Okay. All I want to ask everybody is if you have not yet subscribed, um, as you're watching the video, you'll see this subscribe button here. Uh, just click it. And that makes you one of the people who've subscribed. And then if you want to receive the, uh, you know, messages or alerts or whatever that ab about the upcoming video, which there will be another one in two weeks, just click that bell and that will allow you to get notifications via YouTube. So there's that. Paul Lucas, thank you for joining us. Boy, this is a pretty good crowd. I'm looking right now. There's 13 people. Excellent. Yay. All right. We really appreciate it. Believe me. Um, I actually took quite a ways, quite a bit of time to plan for this one today. Uh, about three hours ahead. So anyway, thank you, everybody. This is really great. Next time, it'll be the advanced features, mostly best efforts. What does that mean and how to make use of it? And uh, fixed time plans, which have become more popular with exoplanet transits and that sort of thing, we'll cover that also. And I will have done some more work on that. And uh, so you may get some more previews of uh, 8.2, which I am expecting to have out in a beta in about, well, in weeks, not months. I'm not going to make any promises right now, but uh, um, I'm zeroing in on it pretty quickly. So it's working. So with that, I will sign off and uh, let me go to my um, my little checklist for saying goodbye. And thanks once again, everybody. Chris Stockdale, Paul Lucas, Iris, Eric, Dick Berg, all of you all, as they say down in the South, all y'all. Thanks for stopping by. I hope I made it worth your while and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>